Hello everyone, my name is Charles Dudo and welcome to my presentation about audience fragmentation. If you were Ray Niekamp, you were probably expecting a presentation on fake news, but it turns out Annabelle Fiddler is doing that topic and I didn't want to be a copycat. Now, let's talk about me for just a second. Again, my name's Charles. I'm 25 years old. I'm an instructional assistant at the School of Journalism and Mass Communication. I'm an avid computer builder, and I'm a longtime fan of broadcasting and video editing. Some of you probably know that I've worked in the past for KBVO TV, and I'm an on-air DJ for KTSW FM, and of course, that's the university's student media radio station. Now, to start off this presentation, I wanted to introduce you to the state of broadcast radio. Is radio dead or dying? It's a very important question that we have to ask. Well, radio is one of the most accessible forms of media. In fact, at least 75% of households in developing countries have access to radio. The majority of people get their news from radio worldwide. In fact, in some countries, it's as much as 88%. According to Gallup, only 6% in the U.S. get their news from radio. So is radio dead or is it merely competing with other media? I think that's another important question we have to ask ourselves. Now, of course, we have to go through a bit of history. Pre-fragmentation, this is going to be way before digital media. You're probably familiar with the show. It's called MASH, and it was the highest rated show ever because of its season finale. Of course, you have to remember at this point there were only a few TV channels, and 77% of the audience share was watching MASH. So this was an immensely popular show, and this is just not possible in today's media landscape. And this impossibility all started with new media, right? And of course, new media was cable TV and now what we call digital media. Now, let's look at the definition of fragmentation from Oxford. Fragmentation is a broad term used to describe the transition of a population from one comprised of a few large audiences for any one media product to another comprised of more numerous, smaller audiences. I think the assumption here is that as there become more options, people are going to stop watching the exact same show. They're going to deviate and form smaller audiences based on their preferences and likes and needs. Now, the truth is, I didn't want to spend too much time on the lit review, but I wanted to select one traditional media article. This is a conference paper from the International Communication Association and it studied the consumption of both Chinese and American TV viewers. Now, they found in China that a few TV channels dominated, while other TV channels were niche, meaning they had smaller audiences. This meant that China was a concentrated market. There was less fragmentation there. Of course, in the U.S., there was much greater fragmentation, although there was some overlap. I also wanted to highlight another research article that focused on digital media called The Seeds of Audience Fragmentation, Specialization in the Use of Online News Sites. Now, they found that users of different news websites had different demographics, meaning that they were totally different groups of people. Topics viewers saw also varied significantly from site to site. The result here is outlet specialization, right? Essentially, different organizations cater to different audience needs and tastes. Now, as for the research questions, I framed this from the perspective of student media. And the reason I did this is because KTSW is the most digital native radio station in town. And I mean that hands down. We have digital audio production, both live on air and off air. We have the KTSW blog and the social media presence. We're on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all of it, right? So the first research question to ask is, will the majority of respondents report listening to FM radio? The second research question is, will the majority of respondents report not listening to KTSWFM? And of course, research question 3A is, will the majority of respondents report listening to radio in the car? Research question 3B is, will the majority of respondents report listening to competing media in the car? And I just wanted to clarify, competing media in the car would be maybe MP3 players, smartphones, streaming, that kind of stuff. Research question 4 Will music selection be a factor in outlet specialization? Now, the methodology. I did two surveys. One was online and for extra credit to the fall 2016 students in the FDOM class. And that's an undergraduate class. The second was in person. That was this semester, spring 2017. I acquired the basic demographics, musical tastes, preference for listening time, 
and of course devices used for music in the car. Now as for our results, for our very first slide here, are you currently a Texas State student? The resounding answer was yes. For some reason somebody said no, but maybe they're surveying the class, maybe they dropped out, or maybe they just clicked wrong. I'm not sure since this was particularly done for extra credit. This is survey one. Now do you listen to FM radio at all? Nearly 80% said yes they do, while around 20% said they don't. I thought this was very interesting. People have been yammering about the death of radio for a long time, but it survived CD players and MP3 players and all sorts of stuff. It even survived satellite radio, right? Anyway, what I'm getting at here is a lot of people still listen to FM radio. So as for this particular slide, do you currently listen to KTSW, Texas State's FM radio station? The resounding answer was no, right? So. I was a little disappointed here. 80% said no, while 20% said yes. So we do have an audience, but you have to wonder, is it the music selection that people don't like? Maybe they aren't aware that there's a student radio station on their campus. Or maybe simply iPods and other competing media are the main choice for them to use. Now, speaking of genre, we also wanted to find out what genres people listen to. And it looked like hip-hop and pop were the two most popular genres, with rock coming in third. I wanted to point out that KTSW is an alternative rock formatted station. Now, as for the time of day that people found themselves listening to music, I don't think it was very surprising here. Most people were interested in the 4 to midnight block. When you're kind of getting off of work, that's probably the biggest uh, time for recreation. Other people did listen around noon to 2 p.m., though, and there were other people that listened in the morning as well. Now, the results here were particularly interesting because something we believe over in the radio industry is that people still listen to radio in the car. We had a resounding no here. 76.1% said they listened to something else, whether that was an internet stream, CD player, or MP3, or maybe even their smartphone. Around 24% did say that they still listen to the radio, though. Now, as for our final page of results, the resounding answer, again, was that people don't listen to KTSW. But there was a sizable chunk of people that listen to KTSW for the music selection and the variety of music. And I think that ties in specifically with outlet specialization. We play alternative rock, right? That, again, that's our format. These people must kind of like that. Now, as for Survey 2, the data here simply isn't completely analyzed since it was done in person. I have about a hundred surveys in hand. It's pretty overbearing for me to translate that into a digital visualization at this point. But the preliminary data does show the same trend. People are listening to radio, but they're not listening to KTSW. They're also not listening to it in the car. Radio is still competing with CDs and MP3 players like iPods and smartphones. Now, I did want to mention some limitations I had. First of all, we had a pretty good response, 180 responses to the first survey and about 100 to the second survey. This is a pretty decent number of responses, but it's not exactly a large sample size, and something you'll always hear me argue for is a larger sample size. I also wanted to point out misrepresentation. Students may simply not accurately represent themselves in these types of surveys. And of course, there are some other limitations too. This is no doubt a survey of convenience. College students also only represent one age demographic. And what I mean here is that there are a lot of other people that are, might be older or even younger than us that listen to radio. And again, it's a survey of convenience because I have access to this undergraduate class. So in conclusion, KTSW, if not any radio station, is a prime example of fragmentation and of niche audiences. Those who reported listening to KTSW did so for its music selection. And again, the most popular genre choices were not genres that KTSW plays frequently, although there are some hip-hop shows. There was significant support for research question 1, 2, 3B, and research question 4. While most people did report listening to FM radio, KTSW was not one of those stations. The music selection on KTSW definitely impacted outlet specialization and attracted a niche audience. There was no support for research question 3A, I thought this was very interesting because we think that people still like to listen to radio in the car, but it seemed to me that MP3 players, smartphones, iPods, that kind of stuff, streaming services, must be out competing radio in this particular sector. That's the end of my presentation. Thanks for listening.